Good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in time and space. Chuck Giants documenting the human experience. Just a guy in search of the true, the good, and the beautiful. Sorry that I'm late to my own show, but um, my dog Gertie, we, we got such wonderful winds out here. My dog Gertie jumped up in the, I left the tailgate down, and she got up in the back of the pickup truck and tore up the garbage. And <laughs> literally, I got, I had anyway, garbage for miles across the desert. Not miles, but probably a mile. <laughs> Uh, it's so windy out, you can't hardly pick the garbage up and put it into the bag without it blowing out again. So <laughs> I had to go pick up all that garbage off of the desert floor there, which made me late to my own show. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Welcome to another photo talk. Not sure how many people are going to be here today for this. It seems like you guys are more into the off-grid living stuff than the photography, but I like to talk about what I like to talk about regardless of who likes it or not. So we're going to talk about the editing process in putting together a blurb magazine. There, there's a lot to this. Just so folks know, the second test copy is on the way from blurb. I'm actually going through the process myself here. And uh, you can order my magazines at chuckjines.com. You'll see a little blurb icon there where you can go to the bookstore. I also have a, a tab on the top of the website that uh, uh, has all, all my books and magazines that you can purchase from there. So that being said, this is the first test copy that I got of uh, the third issue of Against Doctor's Orders. Came in a few weeks ago. And it's amazing how many mistakes we found in it. And that's kind of what I want to talk about. So there's two parts to this with, with, a, with a photo magazine. One, you have the... Uh, the photos that you have to edit and sequence and all that kind of stuff. And you also have text. So there's, there's actually two parts to it that make it uh, rather complicated. Um, so I, I, read all, I wrote all the narrative, right? And then uh, I had uh, four different sets of eyes go through this. And so we went through it, uh, I think, five different times. Had all those eyes go through it, correcting all the all the grammatical errors, all the spelling errors, all that kind of stuff. Okay, five five times, yeah, five times, four sets of eyeballs. Me, my wife, and and two friends of mine that are really good at the spelling and grammar. So you think you got it all done, right? So you take that and then you put it into the actual uh, the software that they have is called Bookwrite. So you put all your text into the magazine. And uh, then you order a test copy. Now, there's little little things that have nothing to do with uh, spelling. For example, if you see here, that is just way far too over to the left. So you got to move that. I had to move some of the uh, some of the photos. Um, I'll show you one here that I moved. Where is it here? I also moved some of the text as well over a little bit because it was it was too far towards the center you know things that you don't really realize until you actually uh get the magazine in your hand there we go <clears throat> this is a photograph of greg on a l platform and he's the microphone is like right in the center of the fold there so i moved that whole photograph all over but it was also amazing. We found about four spelling errors. And I think what changed, um, it's amazing we didn't notice them in the first five rounds, right? But I think having a change, you know, whether it's the black, going from white paper to black or what it is, or just having it in here made them stand out. There was also like, you know, double spaces where there should only be one space. There was, there was quite a few little things, as you can see here, <clears throat> all these sticky notes on here are from my edit one of my editors saying hey fix this fix that um so after all that uh fix it upload it again order another magazine i think these are costing me almost 20 bucks a pop uh this magazine is actually about twice as thick as uh, the first two issues but um so that is coming i got an email on i think it was saturday that blurb had printed it and they're going to send it to me so then you got to go through that all over again, right? And uh, hopefully we don't find any mistakes, but I bet we do. And uh, hopefully the third time is the charm 
fix all those mistakes, order it again, check it again, and uh, hopefully that'll be a goal. But that that there's a lot to making a blurb magazine. There really is. Um, I'll just read this little thing here. This is a uh, just a little prose that I wrote, and it was in the back of the magazine. And I moved. I thought it was better placed in the front of the magazine, uh, juxtaposed against this image. Didn't even notice this. This was white. It should be black. You know, there was a bunch of little tiny things that you just don't notice until you get it. And that's why it's important to order some test copies. Uh, what motivates me? The rust that eats at the rail. The withered skin that droops from an old man's hand. And a word, decay. What motivates me? The bladed grass that, despite all odds, breaks free from the earth's grasp and rises from a crack on the sidewalk. What motivates me? A broom and dustpan that leans against the wall and a junkie encampment down on Lower Wacker Drive. In a word, resistance. What motivates me? Decay and the struggle to resist the inevitable. Death. In a word, life. So I, 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 I stuck in some of, my, some of my poems and my prose and some captions in this. But it really is, a, it's, a, it's a long, tedious process. Um, just in the spelling the typos, the spacing, and all that. Uh, another thing we did is is I changed the font on all of the uh, um, captions that I have to a, a different font. You want to make sure you don't – I only use two fonts. You don't want to go crazy with the fonts as well, but I did change those just so they stand out a little bit more. And uh, this is a, a junkie waiting for some dope. Again, this will – I was hoping to have this completed – and uh, it is what it is, you know, you, you want them to be good. People are paying money for this, and you want them um, uh, to be of high quality. So you go ahead. This I blacked out. I don't, I don't know if Blurb would have allowed that pure nude shot there. So I went ahead and just blacked it out so they don't uh, yell at me for that. But I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't. Some of these photos I'm not really going to show you. Just out of respect for the people. You know, we were thinking this. The train periodically dived underground into the forgotten underbelly of Chicago like a rolling submarine sailing through the dark subconscious of the city. Is it dived or is it dove? <laughs> right? Uh, interesting question. It's, it's either one, really. We, we looked it up as far as the proper... Uh, there's, there's the uh, um, American English and the, and the British English, two different, uh, two different uh, ways you could go with that. But um, hopefully... This will be the uh, the end of it. <laughs> but there's a lot more to this than people think, man. All right, we got some folks here. How you doing? Someone hit a button or pull a string. Oh, I'm sorry I was late, man. Like I said, my dog, Gertie, I left the tailgate down on the truck, and she jumped up there and tore up the garbage. Uh, we have to haul our garbage to the dump ourselves. We don't have garbage service out here. And we probably got 45 mile an hour winds out here today. And I walked outside and it was nothing but garbage for about a mile. <laughs> oh, I could kill her. And uh, real pain trying to pick it up and put it back in the bag because the garbage bags. Finally, I just went and I got a garbage can and, uh, and picked it all up. But, uh, oh, what a mess. So I had to take care of that before doing this. Uh, before doing this. Hey, Ramblin', how you doing? You're, you're mowing the grass? <laughs> Jamon, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. If any of you guys ever made a Blurb magazine, they're, they're a lot of fun. I mean, you don't have to get this technical. I'm reselling them. A lot of people make these kind of things just for their own personal use. Um, so you probably wouldn't have to be as meticulous as I'm being. But um, this is my uh, my rough copy here where I wrote down all my fonts and the size so everything is consistent uh, regardless of what, uh, what issue I have. And... Uh, like I said, it's amazing. I didn't have an uh, one of the one of the things is I should have ended this in the second issue uh, against doctor's orders. Really didn't have enough uh, photographs of Shaggy to carry a third magazine, or at least I didn't think so. So um, I found a workaround, adding adding other photos and 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 bringing some other things into the story. And then, as it turns out, this is this is twice as thick as the first two issues. Um, so it ended up being longer. In text as well, I, I wrote uh, quite a bit more. Again, you can order these on chucknines.com through Blurb, the Blurb bookstore. 
you know, rambling, if you're taking a lot of photos and stuff, even on your phone uh, while you're traveling, a great little thing to do. Oh, there was another little thing, you know. March wasn't the, wasn't the right size. Just a bunch of little things. It was just amazing. I thought I was pretty close to done. <laughs> and then you get that test copy, and you're like, holy shit, that many uh, little mistakes. But uh, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised. We get the second copy, I find some more. Um, and it's just really amazing what your eye does not see. No one's ever made a blur book before besides me. Pretty neat little service. I mean, it's really neat these days that you can do that and self-publish. Um, otherwise, a lot of people's work really wouldn't uh, wouldn't even get out there. And uh, uh, for someone like me, this is this is uh, quite an opportunity and a, and a privilege and an honor to do that. I never heard of them before. Really interesting. Do they provide a template, or you rolled your own? Um, you can you can do it either way. Uh, one of the reasons I do magazines, I'll show you. I have a little. Uh, I think it's right here. <clears throat> the books are kind of expensive. One of the reasons I like the magazines is is they're uh, far more affordable. As a matter of fact, I'm going to redo this entire thing. This is called uh, Commuter Rail. And this is in a book, and I think this is 40 or 50 or it might be $60 for this little tiny thing. Um, the reason I want to redo this is that I have a lot more train photos I've taken the train down to New Orleans, the city of New Orleans, um, a lot more train photos. I have a lot of uh, photographs off the L, not just the suburban uh, metro train. So I'm going to make a magazine uh, called Train Ride or something like that and get it to where it's much more affordable. So you can, you can do all kinds of books, soft cover, hard cover. Um, um, and it's really simple. It's really simple to, to operate it. Yeah, to insert your, your images. I got some cool photos in here. I'm actually kind of proud of this book. And a lot of it's just shots out the train window for like five years. I rode the Metro train uh, into the city to do my uh, documentary work. And some pretty interesting, inter interesting images that I put together in this little book. But like I said, I'm going to redo it into a magazine. You know, a lot of this stuff, you probably can't even see that anymore. I think they, they redid this entire station. Um, and I'm going to write a little bit more narrative. This is pretty much uh, solely a photo book, except for the introduction on it. And the rest of it is, is images. Um, I wrote the little introduction here, but, uh, really cool, man. Really cool. I'm glad, I'm glad they have the, there, there's several services out there that you can do this. I just happen to use blurb. They're probably one of the first, I think. And, uh, so I just kind of stick with them. Uh, I learned how to use their software real easy to do. And, you know, one of the things I like to do is get the old Time Life magazines and kind of look at all the different uh, layouts that they did as far as how they put their photographs, how they put their captions. And uh, that that's really interesting. Um, again, this is called Against Do Gravis is the name of the magazine that I publish. And uh, this first trilogy is called Against Doctor's Orders. And this is a, a story of a, uh, a heroin addict in Chicago who ultimately uh, loses his leg. Uh, uh, I don't know if he's still alive or not. I lost contact uh, with this individual, but um, this is the story of him. Shaggy is, is was his street name, and uh, it's just kind of the story of, uh, uh, of 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 him. Some of the photos on the back cover: "Where Is Your God?" One of the bridges going over the Chicago River, and uh, this is the third one. The first one is called. Um, uh, Eli, Eli, Laman, Saba, it's, it's in Hebrew. And what it means is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, the second one is called uh, God Bless My Addiction. And the third one is called Death Wish. But they're, they're a trilogy of the, of the same story of following this guy around. I'm currently working on a couple different things. Um, of course, Alley Boys, I actually photographed a group, a group of homeless men longer than anything. About five years I hung out with those. Alley Boys, uh, and what I'm doing is, is I bought hard drives to where I'm going through all my all my other hard drives, taking out the photos that I think are worthy of consideration for placement in a magazine, and then putting them on their own hard drive. So I have my New Orleans magazine that I'm going to be publishing called My Feral City. Um, I have uh, Protest, which is all the political protests I did when I was a photojournalist. 
uh, and taking the worthy ones and putting them on a hard drive, their individual ones, alley boys, same thing. Uh, Eads Bridge. I got enough photos where I could do a little history of the Eads Bridge in St. Louis and actually put out a little magazine. Uh, I think that would be really cool. And a little bit, you know, um, I have a hard time selling these, I guess. A heroin addiction isn't something that people normally want to read about, especially in America. Um, like I was saying, as far as like my heroin work, um, I was published over in Europe all over the place. The BBC, the Daily Mail, about a dozen different magazines, Germany, Sweden, all over the place. Nothing here in the United States. Amazing. And uh, I think that has to speak to the culture. We're kind of an entertainment culture. And anything more serious, we kind of kind of shuck away from, it seems to me. You know, my feral city. I visited New Orleans last year, and that is a perfect description. I love New Orleans, man. I actually lived there for quite a while, um, probably a year and a half in totality, all the different times that I went there. I originally went there about two weeks after Hurricane Katrina. And uh, uh, I was a foreman for a, a roofing company down there. Actually, redid the slate roof on the New Orleans, uh, uh, the St. Louis Cathedral there in Jackson Square. And uh, then I later just started visiting there. And I actually lived six months in the Ninth Ward um, doing some things. So I got, uh, got to know a lot of people down there. And I think I have a pretty cool book uh, that I'll be public or magazine. It'll be an issue of Gravis at, at some point. And... Um, you know, something that I would like to do as a future project is uh, forest fires here out west. Um, right now, I'm just too swamped and too busy, but uh, we have some incredible, over 100,000 acres just not north of us here. Uh, as a matter of fact, they're thinking they might have to evacuate parts of um, uh, Las Vegas, New, uh, New Mexico here. Just incredible. I think that would be an awesome photo project. Hard, hard to do. They probably don't want you getting too close. Um, so that would have its challenges, but that would be an interesting documentary project uh, to do. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it. Oh yeah. I love, I love the French quarter. I really do. I mean, it's a, it's a, a smorgasbord for a photographer. It's just really incredible. L like I say, Asheville, Santa Fe, those are kind of like sterile. Uh, um, the, the culture is at a cultural center on a jar on a shelf <laughs> at the cultural center. Um, the, the Asheville, um, Santa Fe, they're kind of like outdoor shopping malls, uh, for very wealthy white people. Whereas New Orleans has some real authentic and very thick and, uh, interesting culture that I really like it. Sweep it under the rug or stick your head in the sand. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That seems to be the way, man. It really does here. You know, it was very different from anything else I'd experienced. Oh, it's a very unique place. The people were very strange. Well, you know what? I want to say abrasive, but that's uh, partially incorrect. No, they are abrasive, and the and the racism down there is thick. The black people, oh my God, I thought Chicago was bad. Man, do they hate white people? Woo! Man, 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 real dangerous. If if the shit should hit the fan, and and you're a white person in New Orleans, you might want to get out of there now, uh, because they're gonna come and kill you. They're just, I'm just telling you the truth, man. <laughs> they're waiting to kill you. Um, but I, I love the French Quarter. It's a very, very unique place, uh, no doubt about it. Again, you can purchase my magazines if you're into documentary work. I think I got some pretty unique work, pretty unique uh, perspective. Um, I'm actually pretty proud of my writing as well as my photography. And you can get these on my website, through my website. They're on Blur Bookstore. But um, they're on the front page of my website, in one of the sidebars, you'll see a little icon for go to my Blur Bookstore. Also in the drop down tab uh, uh, at the top there of all the different uh, categories, uh, you'll see a page that has my bookstore and you can you can order these. It's a good way to support my work. And uh, my web website is my name, chuckgines.com. It was very different, uh, although uh, riding the bridge across the poker train was a trip. Oh, yeah, I used to I actually stayed in um, oh, Covington. Uh, when I was working for the roofing company and I went across that bridge every single day. Uh, what an awesome ride, isn't it? <laughs> the sun was coming up every morning. Really love it. Poopa train, Lake Poopa train is what we used to call it. But um, yeah, I, I love New Orleans. You know, I was thinking about doing a photography workshop, but I think I'm just going to stay out of there. I've, like I said, I probably lived in New Orleans in totality about a year and three months, a year and a half. 
if you add up all the different times that I, that I went there and, and stayed. I think I'm pretty thorough on New Orleans. Um, and with today's political climate and all and how outspoken I am, it's probably not a safe place for me. Um, what I'm wanting to do is actually, I, I've, I've been to the north rim of the Grand Canyon. I would really like to go to the south rim, rim of the Grand Canyon and uh, af- after the tourist season. So I'll probably be headed in that way rather than New Orleans. Um, I love it. I love it. But I've been there. I've done that, I think. And uh, looking for some new experiences. I would want to live there. You know, I've always said I, I'd love if I was a, a millionaire, I'd probably have a little place there in the French Quarter. You know, but not not now, though. I mean, like I said, the political climate and our cultural uh, decay is at such a terrible level. I, I would hate the thought of getting stuck there. <laughs> I really would. And, uh, um, you know, there's a lot of violent crime against white people in New Orleans. It's, it's, it's really sad, really incredible, and unreported. You don't hear anything about it on, on any of the... Uh, well, not, even the alternative media doesn't really touch a lot of the, uh, the, the truth about the racial tensions in America. Even your conservative supposed news agencies um, really gloss over how, how tense things are and how dangerous they are. I highly re- recommend uh, CA-108. I was stationed. What is that? I also want to get out to the Redwoods as well. That's a place I haven't been. But I think I think my next longer, t- it's not that long. It only takes about a day to get to the Grand Canyon from where I'm at. But I think I'm going to take Apollonia and uh, probably Luna and put her in the Bronco and head out that way. It makes them cool. Hey, Harold, how you doing, man? Yeah, there's my website, chuckjines.com. Thanks for dropping that link, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, man, the Blurb magazines, they can be quite challenging. And uh, But again, what a great opportunity to be able to, uh, oh, Sierra Nevada Mountains, okay. Uh, to be able to publish your own work like that is really great. Like I said, I'm going to get some, some stuff that's not so dark and heavy. Um, like I said, I was thinking, I didn't realize I had such uh, uh, cool photos of the Eads Bridge. And what a great little story that is. And I'll probably make that into a little magazine, you know. Um, and then again, I'm going to go through all my train photos and put them in a magazine. These things are so unaffordable. Um, that's why I like the magazines. And the trade books also are affordable. Uh, but any of their books are kind of really expensive, you know. If it wasn't California, I would be living out there right now. I love California. It's beautiful. The people suck, but the <laughs> geography is just absolutely beautiful in, in California. You know, I like New Mexico. It's it's really nice out here. Um, well, <laughs> as long as it ain't real windy and the dog ain't tearing the garbage up in the back of the truck. Um, but yeah, it's it, it is a lot of work putting these magazines together. But then then you have something. You know what I mean? And, and it's really it's really a great feeling of accomplishment to have something that you wrote that you the photographs that you took and the and the the uh, text copy that you wrote and actually put it into a publication and hold it in your hand is a really really good feeling. Um, and the photo on the back, but I think it's a rather unique uh, perspective on heroin addiction that you really don't you won't get anywhere else. And uh, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff or interested in uh, documentary photography, um, I would highly encourage you to uh, purchase my magazine and uh, uh, the series against doctor's orders. Yeah, the taxes, there's a lot of things. Fingers crossed I'll be leaving uh, Minnesota soon because it isn't that much better here. Minnesota's beautiful. I used to fish up there off in Elma, Wisconsin, right across the... uh, uh, Lock and Dam number four on the Mississippi River. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful country. But there's a lot of things that you could do. Like I said, Ramblin' travels a lot. I bet you have a lot of photos that you took on on uh, on your trips that you could put together in a in a little book. And again, you don't have to do these like to resell them or anything like that. You could just do them for your own uh, enjoyment and and just your friends and family. You know that that's probably what most people do uh, with these. Um, probably the people that do the magazines are guys like me that, are, that, that look to resell them. Um, but these are affordable. They're like t- 25 bucks, something like that, um, for each, each issue, which, uh, 
I mean, it's a specialty magazine. I was looking at prices of magazines at the store, and and there's some magazines that are eighteen and twenty dollars. And I figure, well, this is this is a special specialty magazine, and I'd like to make you know a couple bucks <laughs> for sure. But uh, head over to ChuckGiants.com, and you can uh, you can order those magazines and get an interesting perspective. And uh, let me uh, let me see something here. Read you a little something. Again, there's some photos here just out of respect to the family. I'm not going to show. Um, so the train goes underneath the. Uh, <clears throat> as soon as uh, the train periodically dived underground into the forgotten underbelly of Chicago, like a rolling submarine sailing through a dark subconscious of the city. I soon found myself mourning over the melancholy memories of those who had died. I drifted off into a daydream as the train plunged back into the darkness. I started thinking about how much I missed Greg. What a fucking loss. His good friend and fellow junkie Pope said it best after the wake. I'd trade a hundred junkies to get Greg back. Ain't that the fucking truth? What a good guy. What a great talent. Gone. Overdosed at his mom and dad's in the middle of the night after getting out of jail for some minor changes. Happens all the time. A junkie comes out of jail or treatment. Tries to do the same amount of dope as before they went in, and bam, another overdose. How in the world do you ask a grieving mother permission to photograph her dead child? I sat at Greg's wake, frozen in the chair for over an hour, asking myself this question. I knew Greg would have wanted me to photograph his motionless and lifeless body. In time, I mustered up enough nerve to ask his brother. Greg's family was so kind, and his mom allowed me to photograph her beloved son. I had a hard time thinking of a Greg as just another junkie because we had started to become friends. He was even working on a song about my heroin project for me to use in a video. He had an awesome free flow rap about doing dope over at Punchies, shoplifting, me photographing, and all kinds of funny shit. Greg was one hell of a poet. Poet. I'll never forget the day Greg was wearing that new suit. I can still see him standing on the L platform free flowing into my audio recorder while waiting for the train. We were heading to the needle exchange in Uptown. Greg was also wa uh, Greg also wanted to test out a new hustle. Old Greg was the most creative shoplifter I've ever known. He walked into a university bookstore while wearing a suit, put his used textbooks into his bag, and walked out cool as he could be. He then returned the books at another bookstore across town for the money. Awesome hustle. And he looked so smooth, you would have thought he was a law professor. Hell, he may have even shoplifted the suit for all I knew. I view Greg as a fellow artist, not just another junkie. And there he was, dead and in a coffin. No more breath, no more rhyme, no more rhythm, no more rhyme. So, yeah, it, it is a dark subject matter. It kind of chokes me up even reading that, uh, thinking back. But, uh, yeah. Um, hey, Rick, how you doing, man? If you're into any kind of documentary photo photography, um, long-term projects and stuff like that. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you supported my work by purchasing, purchasing the magazines. You can give them away, uh, um, give them to your local prisons. There's actually a prison in Florida that uses my magazines in one of their drug uh, um, treatment things there at the, at the, at the prison. Um, you know, uh, that's, that's why I made them. So hopefully somebody uh, doesn't try hero heroin in the first place. And, uh, so yeah, man, um, there a lot of work. I put my put years into this, a lot of lot of my soul into this kind of stuff. And uh, if you, if you could purchase those, that would be awesome in supporting my work. Again, those can be found at chuckjines.com. The link is right there in the description. Has anybody else tried to uh, put together a blurb magazine or a book or anything like that? Any questions on that? Any questions, comments? It's a long process, man. It's a long process. <laughs> it really, really, truly is. Any questions? No questions. No questions, no comments, no criticisms. Huh? I need to do these things at night. More people. Actually, I don't do these at night because my internet connection really sucks. That's why I do them in the daytime. But, um, yeah, man, if you could help support my work, that would be great. And uh, if you do have any questions about this kind of stuff, leave them in the comment section below. 
and uh, you know, in future photo talks. Photo talks is a series where um, I usually talk about one of my one or two or my of my photos. We talk about the uh, compositional aspects of it, some of the technical equipment aspects uh, of photography, and um, a lot of the social political implications of the photographs. Most of the stuff I do have some nature photography, and we'll take a look at that. But most of the stuff that I have taken is either documentary work or uh, um, photojournalism stuff having to do with uh, political protests, uh, tornadoes, uh, natural disasters, things like that. But um, pretty, uh, pretty much I talk about my own work. Not photography. How is Bertha coming along? Uh, I haven't had time to work on Bertha, man. So she's, she's disassembled and uh, in limbo. But... Um, all right, everybody, if no one has any questions, um, I'm going to take off and get back to work out here in the high deserts of New Mexico at my little off-grid cabin known as Scooter Trash Ranch. Subscribe, hit the bell, all that good shit. Have a great day. Talk to you guys next time.